All right, hello, and welcome back to another episode of Just a Girl from Cleveland. This is episode 116. Uh, you might hear some rain, thunder, lightning outside in classic Cleveland fashion. When I decide to record an episode, a bad storm has to come through the city. I feel like this is just commonplace at this point in time. Like when my schedule works to record, Mother Nature's like, okay, we're gonna give you thunder, we're gonna give you lightning, we're gonna make it really annoying. So I feel like that is happening again this time, but it is what it is. Uh, they just delayed the Guardians game that is going on downtown as well. Uh, sky was looking scary. I went to get my hair cut today, and as I was driving back, it was kind of one of those where you go a little bit faster than usual because you just don't want to get stuck in whatever is coming uh, in the very dark sky. Uh, so you might hear that in the background here. Um, other things to <clears throat> discuss before we get into the topics today. Um, I went to training camp for the first time this year, this past weekend on, um, Sunday. They had a early morning session. I think it started at like 1045. It was kind of weird to be there, um, at that time because typically they start at 2 p.m., uh, the times I have gone before. Um, but that was the first time I had a chance to go this year. I know they've had way less dates for open to the public times uh, this season because of the joint practices in Philly, uh, because of their time in West Virginia. So I think there were maybe only eight uh, open to the public chances this season, which uh, is a lot less than usual, but I was glad I was able to make it to one. Um, if you saw on um, any form of social media, the lovely picture I took of Jakeem Grant and Dewan Jones standing next to each other on the sideline that uh, funny every single uh, media outlet has picked up, which was pretty exciting for me. Um, it's funny because I've had that thought for a while about the star contrast between the two of them. Like I've been commenting on here and just in general when talking about the Browns for weeks about how big Dewan Jones is, just like a massive human. Uh, and then, you know, I've Obviously, you look at Jakeem Grant and you're like, that's a small football player. It's just not the typical size you think of when you think of a football player. He's, uh, you know, receivers can be smaller, but he's uh, he's definitely extra small on the smaller side. Uh, so I just happened to look over at the exact moment they were standing next to each other. And I was like, oh, got to get a picture of this. Like this contrast is hilarious. And the entire internet agreed. So that was really fun uh, to see that picture everywhere. If you didn't see it, because uh, you for some reason listen to this and don't follow me on Twitter, which I feel like most people who listen to this probably follow me on Twitter. Um, you would have probably seen it there, but go take a look. It is, uh, it's pretty funny. Uh, just uh, crazy that two guys that look like that can uh, both play the same sport and be impactful at their position, uh, but do not look like they should be playing the same sport at all. Like Dewan Jones is like double the size of him. Uh, it's pretty, pretty crazy. So that was really funny and uh, an interesting part of the week for me. Just, you never know what's going to take off on the internet. It just sometimes something hits. Um, okay, so let's just get into it because I have um, kind of one main overarching topic. I want to quickly touch on the um, preseason game against the Eagles. And you know, it's so funny. I was just looking at I, my notes right here in front of me, which I kind of, you know, list out the topics I want to talk about. And I typed playoff game versus the Eagles. So maybe that's just some manifesting uh, for the Super Bowl this year. I don't know what was going through my head in, in typing that out, but uh, let's manifest that. Yeah, Super Bowl, Browns, Eagles, that's what it's going to be. Um, but no, preseason game <laughs> against the Eagles. Um, the only thing I really wanted to call out from this because it's been the bigger conversation from it. I don't feel like there was anything else that I have different to say that I didn't already say about the game in Washington. Um, I wanted to touch on Cade though, because obviously a bit of a struggle at the end of the game there. He missed his first kick. There was a penalty. He had the opportunity to get a second kick to take the lead at, you know, the very end of the game. It wasn't exactly the end, like there was still time left, but it would have put the Browns in the lead and he missed it again. Um, and then kind of the criticism continued because at halftime on Cade's Instagram account, he had reposted a video of him kicking three for three earlier in the game. It was, it was a reposting of something he did and like the fact that it was posted during the game, I think rubbed a lot of people the wrong way. Um, so thoughts on that first is that 
I don't think it was Cade um, posting that. A lot of guys have someone else running their social media for them. A lot of them aren't doing that all on their own. Um, so I don't think it was Cade taking out his phone and reposting that during halftime. Um, I do think whoever's running his social media should probably be a little bit more self-aware of the situation and uh, know that he shouldn't be posting when Cade is out there on the field. Like I think that would just be a uh, smart business. Um, so definitely should probably not do that in the future, but I'm not too worried about that part specifically. Um, obviously missing <clears throat> both of those kicks is, is not great. And I know it's just the preseason, but kicking is such a mental thing that, um, it, it does give some concerns about what Cade is going to look like once the regular season starts and he's put in these positions again, is it going to have him get in his head a little bit more, or is he going to be able to shake it off and move forward? Um, I just think that's something that we're just going to have to see because it seems like Kevin Stefanski is fully bought into giving Kate a chance, which I respect. I think you draft someone that high, you want to give them the opportunity. I said this last episode that I thought that was going to be the case. Um, and it seems like Kevin has repeatedly confirmed that they are not planning on bringing anyone else in, especially as we get closer to 53 man roster cutdown day. It doesn't seem like there are any plans, um, for competition to be brought in. So uh, that could obviously change maybe as uh, those cuts are made and a team cuts a kicker that the Browns feel like they want to bring in. I'm sure that could be a possibility, but uh, as of right now, I see Cade um, still getting a, a full shot this year. And I know that's gonna frustrate a lot of people, but um, it's just one of those things where you have to kind of hope for the best. And we've had kickers that have been not doing great in Cleveland, we kind of move on from them quickly and they go on to another spot and end up being a great kicker and having a successful career. Uh, and so I, I think they're trying to be patient with this and give it some time uh, so as not to make that same mistake again and be too quick to judgment um, and not give a guy enough time to feel like he uh, can develop and that the team has confidence in him and is putting that behind him. So. Um, that's just what it's going to be. And I know people are going to be mad and there's probably going to be a game this season where it doesn't work out. But if we can be a really, really good team offensively uh, and on the defensive side of the ball, you just hope that it, games aren't coming down to that consistently and that that's not something we have to worry about all the time. So uh, that is kind of where I'm at with uh, that whole conversation, which is so unfortunate for me. You guys know I, I love Kate and I have wanted it to work out and I still want to just um, be patient as we get into the regular season. Um, sorry, I will be pausing to take sips of my tea and drinks today because I am on the tail end of, I don't know if it's cold, allergies, whatever it is. Um, so throat's getting a little dry. So just bear with me when I'm taking those pauses. You're not uh, hearing something weird. It's just um, me stopping to take a, a quick drink. Okay, so the bigger conversation for today that is going to be the bulk of this podcast episode is my projections for the 53-man roster. I need everyone to remember that this is just the initial 53-man roster. So this is not the only 53 people that are going to be able to be active the entire season because injuries happen, things change. It's just not how that works. I remember last season... Um, specifically about Isaac Rochelle, he didn't make the initial 53-man roster, and I think it was maybe one week later he was called up um, to actually play. So it's it really doesn't mean everything uh, if you make that initial roster. I think a lot of times it's a game, too, of who you think is going to be able to make it back to your practice squad, what kind of agreements are in place in terms of that. Um, so it's not all like, oh, these are the 53 best players and this is what we're going with. Um, there's a lot of strategy behind it as well. So I think that's something to consider um, as I'm going through this. Um, and I'll give some context for all the things. I'm not just going to read off all of my <laughs> opinions and move forward. So we'll start with the offense and then we'll go into the defense. Quarterback. So I had tweeted this the other day and I'm kind of backtracking because I in a lot of ways, don't think it makes sense to keep three quarterbacks just based on how much money you have invested in QB1. It just didn't, 
it didn't make a ton of sense to me and I felt like I'd had enough confidence in what I've seen from DTR. I wanted him to be QB2. I don't think Josh Dobbs has looked great this preseason. So for a while I was kind of like, I feel like we just need two quarterbacks. Then when I went through this exercise of uh, going through each position group, picking who I, I think should be selected in all of those and what makes sense, I ended up coming back to putting three quarterbacks on the roster. So having Deshaun, DTR, and Josh Dobbs all on the active roster. Obviously, there's the new rule where you can have um, an additional quarterback uh, on the the 53. Uh, so I think in that in that sense, it also makes sense as well. But um, I kind of uh, changed my mind on that, which is okay. You're allowed to change your mind on things. You're allowed to to um, not stand by one thing that you said at one point. So I'm going with three quarterbacks now for this 53-man roster, and I think Kellen Mond is going to be the odd man out. Obviously, he didn't perform well when he's had opportunities, and I just think uh, these other three guys make more sense. Obviously, Deshaun, we know. Dobbs, I think, um, continues to be a good friend and veteran presence to Deshaun, and then DTR, I think, is kind of this this future backup and maybe someone you think you can develop and then eventually trade uh, if he, you know, has enough success. I think that is uh, a possibility as well. All right, so wide receiver. I think this is probably one of the most highly contested positions on who is going to make the final 53. I think there are going to be seven wide receivers that make this um, initial 53, and those are Amari Cooper, Donovan Peoples-Jones, Elijah Moore, David Bell, Cedric Tillman, Marquise Goodwin, and Austin Watkins Jr. I've talked about Austin, Austin Watkins Jr. I love what we've seen from him. Um, I think the notable names that are left off of this list are one, Jakeem Grant, which I think is going to surprise some people. Uh, but I feel like on this in this group of players and on this roster, there are other guys that can perform the special teams needs that we don't necessarily need someone like Jakeem Grant. Um, and that th that role can be filled elsewhere because he doesn't have as much of a use as a true receiver. Um, whereas I think someone like Austin Watkins would, and I would, would rather have him on the roster. Marquise Goodwin was someone I went back and forth with, but it feels weird to me that he's still been there all the time. Um, and it feels like maybe there's a chance for him to still play this season. There hasn't been a ton of information out there, but the fact that he is always there makes me think that there uh, is a real chance of that. So I decided to put him on. I think the other five guys are more self-explanatory. Amari Cooper, Donovan Peoples-Jones, Elijah Moore, obviously. Cedric Tillman, rookie just drafted. He's looked really good in the preseason. I think self-explanatory there. David Bell has been a little bit more controversial for people because he didn't do a ton last year. He's not really a flashy player, um, and that was never the intention when drafting him. Nobody thought he was going to be some speed gadget receiver. Like th Those weren't the things that you wanted when you drafted David Bell. Um, he's more of a consistent <clears throat> type guy, um, and someone Stefanski has really liked. So I think they're going to give him another opportunity, even though it's his second year. I just don't see them getting rid of him at this point in time. I see him definitely making this roster as well. Um, also left off, I guess, notably is Anthony Schwartz. Um, I, his time is up. He's just not a football player, unfortunately. Hope the best for him, but it's just, it is what it is, man. Also left off um, Jalen Darden, Mike Harley, some other names that we've heard um, you know, over recent times, but uh, just aren't going to cut it at this point. We have to be selective, guys. It's the 53-man roster. Um, okay, so running back next. This one um, is interesting because for my initial 53, I'm only keeping two, um, but that's because I think they might look elsewhere for uh, RB3. Uh, so I have Nick Chubb and Jerome Ford making it and not having Dimitrik Felton on it. I really just don't see the place for Dimitrik on this roster. And I think that they could find value elsewhere for a third running back, maybe from someone who is cut from another team at some point. Um, other moves that can be made. Like I just, I don't think it makes sense for Dimitrik. So for this initial 53, I'm keeping two, but I think eventually they would end up having three, and that's where some of that movement comes as we go into the season. Tight end, 
Um, I think this one has not been contested at all in any way on what's going to happen here. David Njoku, Jordan Akins, Harrison Bryant, those three are going to be on the roster. Um, and not much to say there because I don't think there's been a ton of debate. Offensive tackle, I have Jack Conklin, Dwan Jones, Jedrick Wills, and James Hudson. Um, so we've seen some depth developing there this offseason in Dewan Jones, who I've talked about. It's funny how much um, I've talked about him so far uh, on the podcast leading up to this season. He's just been the talk of the town, um, which is exciting. And I think he has a, a long way to go, but they've seen a lot of promising things from him. Um, James Hudson kind of continues to develop as well, has been around for a couple years now, but um, pretty confident in the starters there, obviously. And Jack Conklin and Jedrick Wills, our offensive line, has been pretty set in stone for a while now. Not a ton of changes really happening there, um, as well as with the guard position. I have, obviously, Joel Batonio, Wyatt Teller, and then Michael Dunn. So there I am leaving off, notably, I would say, Drew Forbes, who... Um, has been with this team uh, for I don't know how many seasons now but he's been a guy who's been around but um, leaving him off there and only having three guards kept um, I think Drew Forbes is someone who can also make it back to the practice squad and um, be called up as needed uh, hopefully fingers crossed though no injuries we don't need those kinds of things center is the part of the offensive line that I think has been um, interesting because of what they did this offseason uh, in re-signing Ethan Posich. Nick Harris was out last year with his season-ending injury that happened on the first play of the first preseason game and is now back. And then they drafted Luke Whipler, who has actually looked really good and has had some really promising moments um, during the preseason where I think it's made this conversation of do you keep all of them? Um, do you keep two of them? What do you do at this point? Um, and interestingly, I have all three of them being kept on this initial roster. I think Posich is actually someone who could play some guard. He has some experience doing that at the NFL level. Um, and I think that um, the other two, like Nick Harris, I, I don't know if I see like a long-term future for him on this team, but Luke Whipler is someone I think... Um, could develop in the future and that they would want to keep around because of th what they see in him post Ethan Posich. Um, so I think Ethan is going to be the starter going into the season, but I think they want to keep their options open in terms of development and where they see things going in the future, whether that's Nick Harris or Luke Whipler. I don't know. I'm leaning towards Luke Whipler at this point and that they feel like um, maybe having him on his rookie deal rather than looking to, to sign, re-sign Nick Harris in the near future makes a lot more sense. But um, I think it's good to be cautious with it and kind of see what happens this season uh, as the two of them are behind Ethan Posich. So that one might be interesting to some people because I don't know if everyone has all three of them being kept on, on the initial 53. Uh, defense, um, corner, we're keeping a lot of them. Denzel Ward, Greg Newsom, Martin Emerson, AJ Green, Cameron Mitchell, and Mike Ford. Uh, the reason I am keeping six corners, whereas I think a lot of people might only keep five, is injuries. This group will get injured. Denzel Ward almost every season has injuries. I think Greg has been injured. I think corners just get injured in general, um, I mean, anyone can really get injured at any time. But in general, I feel like corners on this team have had a history of that. So I think that's something you want to be cautious with. And I envision them wanting to keep uh, a couple other guys around. Cameron Mitchell being someone they just drafted uh, and have looked at maybe as a future slot corner. I think that's someone they want to develop. Um, so I think these are guys that they're going to want to uh, just keep around and see what happens just in case. We don't want injuries, but you never know. Safeties, I have Grant Delpit, Juan Thornhill, Rodney McLeod, and then lastly, Ronnie Hickman. Um, I am picking Ronnie Hickman over D'Anthony Bell. Last year, D'Anthony Bell was kind of the nice preseason story. He really flashed in a couple of the preseason games, I believe ha had some interceptions and was one of those guys that people were talking about. This year, it's Ronnie Hickman kind of filling that same role. And I think D'Anthony Bell might get the short end of the stick, which is just kind of how it goes sometimes. Uh, it's, you know, you might have one year and then another guy uh, ends up stepping up. Nothing is really safe in this league. 
Um, and I think DeAnthony Bell is someone who could come back to the practice squad um, and still maybe get some time with this team. But I think Ronnie Hickman has done enough in the preseason to um, earn the uh, opportunity to be on this initial 53 uh, all those interceptions, man. And they did say, I don't know uh, when I recorded last time, if we already knew that his injury wasn't going to be anything too bad. I think they were uh, evaluating him for a concussion and then said everything was good to go. So no issues there, which is um, definitely good news because that would suck to have things end for him just because of an injury. Okay, linebackers. Um, JOK, Anthony Walker, uh, Sion Takitaki, Tony Fields, and Diabate. I think I can never pronounce his name. I have done it multiple times in the last few days, so I'm just going to give his, his last name because his first name gives me um, troubles, but Diabate. Um, I'm leaving off Jordan, Jordan Kunasic, um, and I think that might be a little bit controversial leaving him off. I'm also leaving off Matthew Adams and Charlie Thomas. Charlie Thomas is someone who has um, shown a lot of potential, but um, I think with what I'm looking at in this group right now, I think Diabate has um, a kind of, in a similar way to Hickman, proven himself uh, during this preseason and has kind of earned uh, a spot there. Uh, I, I could see potentially keeping six linebackers, so this isn't one I'm super firm in compared to some of the other groups. I think six is definitely a potential here, um, but you maybe uh, also have this be a position where the coaches, the front office, are having those conversations with those players um, and hoping to bring them back to the practice squad. So this is one I'm, I'm definitely interested to see what happens uh, come um, the initial cutdown day and then whoever they decide to bring back after that. Defensive tackles, Dalvin Tomlinson, Jordan Elliott, Shelby Harris, Siaki Ika, and Maurice Hurst. So that leaves off Tommy Togiai and Tristan Hill. Tommy Togiai, when I um, realized that he, based on what I was looking at on this list, he was going to be left off, um, it made me kind of start to think about Andrew Barry and his draft classes and how for a long time it just felt like if Andrew Barry drafted you, you were going to be safe on this roster. Like we just didn't have... Um, the talent that we had to start cutting people that he drafted even in later rounds that weren't really performing well. This is the first season I really feel like they're starting to have to make cuts like this um, where you, you know, have had a little bit of time. You haven't really stepped up yet. And look, Tommy's a Buckeye. I love him, but uh, he hasn't really shown a lot. <clears throat> and even in preseason this year. Um, so this is kind of the year where uh, I think the team is making that shift to, hey, if you haven't shown it yet, we're going to bring in other guys and you're going to probably lose your spot. Um, okay. And then last, well, last main position group, um, Edge, we've got Miles Garrett, Zadarius Smith, uh, uh, Obania Okoronkwo, Alex Wright, and Isaiah McGuire. So this le leaves off Isaiah Thomas, Lonnie Phelps, a couple other guys, but those are the notable ones. Isaiah Thomas is another Andrew Berry drafted player that I am having off of um, this team now. Um, and I feel good about the five guys that I have listed there. Then we have kicker, Cade, punter, Corey, Bo Corey Bohorquez, and long snapper, Charlie Hewlett. Old reliable man, Charlie, like no questions ever. He's just there. We don't have to have any conversations. It's just like, maybe I should get a jersey for him because he just puts no stress on my life, which is the best. Um, so shout out, Charlie. And this is... um. <clears throat> Sorry, this is probably the only time I'm ever going to mention your name in this podcast, so. Okay, sorry guys, I had to pause there. I had a massive cough attack, but I'm glad I got through all of that because that was really the main part of the episode. So that is all I have for you guys today. Still wanted to close things out even though I didn't have anything left to say. And literally the cough attack came on and I just had to, had to stop. So um, if you could just leave a review or rating, that would be great. Share with a friend. We're getting close to the regular season. I promise we're almost there, uh, but appreciate you all. And in the meantime, go Browns.